Ocasio-Cortez may be a rising star on the far left of the Democratic Party, but with midterms approaching, do the Democrats really want to run on a socialist platform? I actually spoke with Maria Svart. She is the national director of the Democratic Socialists of America, and she says one goal the group has is to place controls on business, actually eventually eliminate private ownership of business, and put that in the hands of workers. Here's what she told me. We believe that large companies actually should be controlled by workers. We know what it takes to run a company, often far more than the hedge fund managers that might buy the company or a distant CEO. Here to discuss this are Nathan Rubin, founder of Millennial Politics, and Kate Frades, the managing editor for Olympic Media. Kate, let me start with you. Um, you know, Ocasio-Cortez and others are getting a lot of attention because they are the cause celeb right now, Democratic Socialists. There are only 48,000 of them. Are they going to have any real impact? Because 48,000 versus millions of what you might call mainstream Democrats, are they going to really pull the party to the left or even as far as Maria Spart wants to go, the elimination of private property ownership and private business? Well, we have to desperately hope that they don't, because if the majority of the Democratic platform becomes the elimination of private property, America is going to be in a very bad spot. But on top of this, you're right, there's only 48,000. However, the amount of media attention we're giving is clearly substantial. But these people seem to lack a very fundamental understanding of both how humans work, how business works, and how societies work. So I'm not overly concerned, but... I am worried that it's swollen up to 48,000. So, we'll see if those numbers stay there, but okay. who knows? Nathan, um, Ocasio-Cortez is very popular. She is popular among the next generation of voters, and there are millions of millennials who I think listen to her and actually buy into what she is saying. So will she be able to deliver to the Democrats this voting bloc, or is she perhaps out of the mainstream, like Maria Sparta, I think it's pretty out of the mainstream to say the eventual vision is the elimination of private ownership of business and property. Well, I don't disagree, but what I will say is that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez speaks in broad strokes to articulate a vision. And I think when she speaks, people hear the truth in what she's saying, the idea that um, unrestrained capitalism exploits working people that is perhaps a fact, and the idea that we need a system that can protect working people is something that we should be working towards. So while I don't think they'll be successful in transferring uh, ownership of companies to workers necessarily, I think we do need to look seriously at how we can move the conversation to the left to protect working people. But is now the time in our history that that's going to resonate with the Democrats? I mean, was having a discussion with a previous guest. The Democrats used to be what you might call the Labor Party. They don't seem to be that right now. They look a lot like Republicans from 1980, and that's what Ocasio-Cortez seems to be resonating upon. But when you say, uh, you know, protecting people from unrestrained capitalism, there are big regulations in place uh, that protect people. Uh, but uh, a free market system, there are winners and losers. The difference is the government doesn't pick it. You're out there with your ability to try and do the best you can. But what we have seen just in the last several months is that Wells Fargo has been opening fraudulent accounts on behalf of their customers, four, five, six, seven accounts, and they're not being held accountable. They're paying a fine, but it's white-collar crime. Well, no, no one is necessarily going to jail. And even during the, the mortgage crisis, the financial crisis, we just saw that Wells Fargo made a mistake, and 400 people lost their homes. These are real people facing real consequences, and the, the, the Wall Street banks are just sort of playing with lottery money. Kate, let me, let me bring you in, because there was a lot of criticism that nobody from Wall Street went to jail for the financial collapse. In the case of Wells Fargo, though, I would say there were ramifications. I mean, the CEO, the CFO, they lost their jobs and had all of their, their pay and bonuses clawed back. I mean, but does Nathan have a point? Well, I think when it comes to white collar crime, oftentimes we don't see these people get the punishments that honestly they do deserve. They have more money. They are able to slip through the cracks, if you will. But that doesn't mean that capitalism is a bad system. It is the most effective and pros prosperous system to bring people from any level of poverty to richness up. It's effective. It's worked. America wouldn't be where it is without it. And I'm not sure how they think that they can bring a utopia about, because just based on human nature, utopia is never going to happen. We've seen this over and over again. Socialism does not work. Tell it to the Venezuelans. All right, Nathan, I appreciate your being here. Did you want to get something can in? Can I get my final one? Yeah, yeah, I'll let you get it. The, the one thing that I would say to that is that 
We are effectively living in some manners in a socialist experiment. When you get in your car and you drive on paved roads, that's socialism. When you have traffic lights, that's socialism. When my house is on fire and I call the fire department, we are looking out for each other, and that is socialism. So this idea that we can't have some restraints on capitalism to protect people for the benefit of society, I think we can do better. We're going to stop right there. Nathan, I appreciate your being here. Kate, I always appreciate your being here as well. Thank Thanks. you. As California battles more deadly wildfires, officials are warning it is about to get worse for the